Hey you guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I'm gonna do in this video is show you how to get that cool depth of field in the background. You see how the background's nice and blurry? I'm gonna show you how to do that. So that's called background separation. They call it bokeh or bokeh. I mean, potato, potato, how you wanna pronounce that? I always say bokeh, it's probably wrong. So there's a couple of ingredients um, to getting that background blur, if that's what you're looking for. And I really like that look. It makes it look more 3D. Um, it really brings you more into the environment and helps isolate the subject, which is what I'm looking for in headshot footage, like what you're looking at right now. So you're looking at focal length. For example, I'm using a 35 millimeter lens. That allows me to get relatively close to the camera. I'm actually touching the camera with my finger right now so I can reach it from where I am. Then you have aperture. And aperture is the size of the lens diaphragm. Now I'm using an f1.8 lens. So that is a large aperture prime lens. It's not a zoom lens, it's a prime. It's 35 millimeter only. If it was a zoom lens, it would be like a 24 to 70 or something, for example. So you have focal length, you have aperture, and then on top of that, you have distance to your subject. Now, distance to your subject is one of the biggest factors when it comes to background separation. And I'll show you what I mean. If I move back, you can see now the background doesn't really look that blurry at all. It's kind of like blending in. It actually is out of focus, but only like a little bit relative to when I get closer to the camera. So now, when I get really close to the camera, you could see the background's really blurry. I mean, especially back here, you could just see the bokeh rendering there looks awesome. And notice it's because of the distance to the subject. So now I'm really close to the lens, so I'm exaggerating that depth of field and it gets blurrier and blurrier the closer you get to your subject. So like I said, I have the lens at f1.8 right now. Um, so it's at its max aperture. So there is one other variable that can make this kind of difficult, and that is the light source and how bright the conditions are. Alrighty, so here I have my Sigma lens. Now this lens is for the crop factor cameras and it goes for about $260 these days. It's very affordable. It's a really high quality lens. The autofocus works great, but what's really nice about it is that max aperture of f1.4. So let me mount this up to my Sony a6400 here and I will show you how I have the camera all set. So I'm just gonna mount that up like so. And if I turn the camera on, and if I turn the aperture dial, you could see it's opening up there. So I'm gonna put it at f1.4, which is right there wide open. All right, so here we are looking at the back of the camera, and I just wanted to show you a couple of settings here that are important for getting that background blur. And notice here that f number, that is the aperture. And to change that, you just turn this dial up here by default. So if you turn this dial to the left, it'll go all the way to f1.4. And of course I have the camera in movie mode. You can see right there. Then you're gonna put the aperture to the smallest number you have on your lens. Now that might be f2, it might be f2.8, it might be f1.8, like I was using on my other lens, the Sony 35 millimeter, which is right here. And notice the aperture diaphragm in there. Let me go over these settings quick. So first thing I wanna do, I wanna, I'm gonna show you how I have my video set. So if you go into the menu system under the second tab, you have file format and record settings. So I have the camera set to 4K. So I have it set to 4K and I also have it set to 24p at 100 megabits per second. Now you could obviously use 30p if you'd rather use 30p, it all depends on your workflow. And if you're from somebody that's not in the North America region, your camera is gonna be set to PAL mode, so you're gonna have different frame rates here. You'll have 25p, for example, as opposed to 24p, uh, just so you're aware, but that's just because your camera's in a different region. Or you can switch it to NTSC, like I have my camera set, and then you'll have the same frame rates as me. If I just hit the focus button here, it'll bring you back to the screen here. If I hit the function menu here, because I'm in movie mode by default, down here on the right is the actual record mode, exposure mode is what it's really called, that I'm using. And I have it set to manual. So if you press the center button here on the dial, that'll bring you into there and I have it set to manual. I recommend doing that as well. When you have it set to manual, the camera won't change on you. you. You just, you're hard setting everything directly. So like I said, I have the aperture hard set at f1.4. Now I wanna hard set the ISO to the lowest number that I can uh, for my given scene. So I'm gonna hard set that to 100. You can leave the ISO on auto and then it will fluctuate and auto expose for you, but I like to manipulate the lights separately for that purpose. So that's why I hard set it to 100 in this case. Now, if you're using S-Log and things like that, 
your base ISO is going to be higher than 100, but that's more advanced. This is really more for a beginner just starting out here. The white balance I have set to 5,000. If you guys don't know what your white balance needs to be, just set it to auto for now. One other setting that is absolutely critical to video is your shutter speed. If you want your video to look proper, you want it to look professional, you really have to have your shutter speed at double the frame rate that you're recording at. So I'm recording at 24p, so double that frame rate, the closest value is 1 50th of a second. So this shutter speed is relatively slow compared to the max shutter speed of the camera. So this is what leads to problems when you're trying to record video at f1.4 if you're in bright conditions, because those bright conditions would require a much faster shutter speed to get a proper exposure. So to combat that, one option would be to lower the ISO, but you can't lower it any more than 100 on this camera. What you do in that scenario is use an ND filter and this is a variable ND filter. So you can see looking at it here, it looks fairly clear. It's only slightly tinted. But if you look at it on the side here, it has this scale. And that scale kind of indicates how dark it gets. Now, see how dark it is now? If you want to change your ISO, you just press this side button over here where it says ISO by default. That'll bring you into the ISO area. If you want to change the shutter speed, you would turn this thumb dial here. So I have that at 1 50th. The aperture is this dial up here. The only other thing that I have here is the facial recognition is turned on. You may want to have that off if you plan on holding products up in front of the camera because a lot of times it'll just stay on your face, which kind of stinks. But I'm going to leave that on for default, assuming that you just want to talk in front of the camera and you're not holding products up. So let me just show you where that is in the menu just to make sure that you have that turned on as well. So face eye AF set, if you go in there, this is where you can turn it on face eye priority in AF. So I have that turned on, then face detect frame display, I also have that turned on, and it's set to human. That Those are the basic settings. So at that point, the camera's pretty much ready to go and start recording. All right, so one other thing I wanted to show you about the ND filters is they actually screw onto the front of the lens. If you look here, you can see there's like a thread right here, and that's called the filter thread. And there's a little number right there as well. You see that number? It's got like a little circle with a line through it and then a number. That is the millimeter filter thread that this lens uses. So this is a 52 millimeter filter thread. Now the filter that I have is a 67 millimeter filter. So I bought a filter large enough to fit on the largest lens I have because this is an investment. Now this is an affordable filter. This is a Gobi filter. So it wasn't really that expensive, but the good ones are several hundred dollars and buying one for every lens is just not really practical if you're somebody like me. So I recommend buying one for your largest lens. And then what you can do is you can purchase these really affordable cheap accessories called step down filters. Um, the one side here is 67 millimeters. So I can screw the lens filter to this step down ring like so. And now if you look at it from the back, you could see how it's smaller, see? So now this is 52 millimeter thread. So I can screw this onto the Sigma lens, like so. See how it threads right on? And now I have an ND filter mounted to the front of this beast. And you can turn it to make it, once you tighten it, you can turn it to make it darker and lighter. So that's how you maintain that 1 50th of a second shutter speed in bright conditions. You put sunglasses on the lens. And that's really the key trick to maintaining that shutter speed. And I also have another step down ring for my 35 millimeter Sony lens, because notice this lens, if you look at the filter, it's 55. See how it's 55 right there? So I needed another step down ring for this lens. So this is a 67 to 55 millimeter step down ring. All right, so I'm just gonna take this filter back off and I will meet you in front of the camera in a second. All right, guys, if you'd like to support the channel, I'd really appreciate it. There's a couple different ways you can do that. There's actually a thank you button over here you could press if one of my videos really helped you out. And if you scroll down below the video by hitting that show more option, there's a bunch of affiliate links. Now these links, if you click on them, they will give me like a small commission and uh, it just helps pay the bills and I really appreciate it. All right, so now I'm recording with the Sony a6400 and the Sigma 30 millimeter f1.4 lens and it's at f1.4. And uh, note the different zoom because I was using the full frame 35 millimeter a minute ago. So because of the crop factor of the Sony a6400, this is an effective 45 millimeter view. So that's why it looks more zoomed in 
than it was earlier. Now, of course, if I get closer to the camera, the background will get nice and super blurry, as you can see here. Uh, but if I move back a little bit, it gets less blurry, but still looks pretty good. So now this is working right now at f1.4 without an ND filter. All right, so I have the filter on and you can see it got a lot darker. So now I can dial it in. Like right there is max brightness and right there is like maximum darkness. So I'm just gonna leave it right there for now. So check this out. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna raise the main light here. Whoops, I just turned it off. I'm gonna raise this main light power, so watch. It's at 25, 30, I'm gonna put it at like 40. 40, all right, so now you can see I'm brighter and the background in turn, I didn't raise the power of those lights. So the background's gonna get darker while I get brighter. So I could even go brighter than this, it looks like. Right about there, it looks pretty good. So as you can see with the ND filter, now I'm getting a better balance of light between the background and the foreground. And because I'm at f1.4, I'm getting that super blurry background as well. So in bright conditions, like I said, it's not gonna be easy. You're not gonna be able to use a lens at f1.4 in bright conditions without an ND filter. However, if you're in very low light situations, you can use the lens at f1.4 and you'll be able to get away with it without an ND filter. So it depends on what kind of lighting environment you have in your studio. For me, like I said, I'm using this one main light and you know that is what lights me. And then I have other lights lighting up the background. The difference between those light values is what's called light ratios. So that's pretty much how this works. So if you're using a crop factor camera, I highly recommend getting the Sigma 30 millimeter F1.4 lens for headshot stuff like this. If you need a wider angle view, like if you want to include more of the room in your scene, you could move the camera further away. But if you don't have that ability, you'd have to get a wider angle lens. Now the best option would be the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 lens. That'll give you a much wider view than what you're seeing here. It'll also look like you moved the lens further away, for example. And then if you have the camera pretty far away and you want a closer view, you could go with the Sigma 56 millimeter F1.4 lens. Now I reviewed all these lenses. These lenses are phenomenal. They're pretty much the best options, in my opinion, for the Sony crop factor cameras because they're super affordable and super high quality and the autofocus works amazing. So I would recommend those lenses as best bang for the buck, in my opinion. So as far as ND filters go, I'll have a few of them linked below. They vary in price and you pay for what you get, you know, as far as quality goes. So the cheaper ND filters will have color casts. So it might like inject a little bit of a yellow tint. You do get what you pay for with lens filters. I really hope this helps. I really hope this cleared up a couple things for you guys. And like I said, be sure to ask questions in the comments below if you have them. And uh, I'll catch up with you guys next time. All right. Have a good one. Take care.